today we're going to chat a little bit about student debt relief. There's been a lot in the news recently about student debt relief, whether it's the Biden administration canceling student debt uh, or whether it's news about the public service loan forgiveness program or even here in California discussions about canceling debt, particularly debt that's holding up student transcripts and things like that. So uh, for us at the College Futures Foundation, we're focused on improving opportunities for more Californians, particularly those of diverse backgrounds, to not only gain access to higher education, but to complete with a quality post-secondary credential and degree. So for us, this conversation about student debt is critical to the future for students here in California, and we believe throughout the nation. So we're going to talk a little bit about it, sort of unpack what we know so far. And I'm going to ask Rhea to talk about her work, particularly around affordability, because these two things are tied together. Student debt and affordability have to be tied together. And then I'm going to close out talking a little bit about the responsibility of institutions when it comes to student debt. So Rhea, let's jump right into it. Uh, so That's good. Um, there's been a lot of talk about um, uh, student loans, student debt, Tell us a little bit about what you're seeing and um, uh, what are some of the things going on both at the federal level and the state level? Yeah, so thank you, Eloy. And I think uh, student debt is something that has been getting a lot of attention in recent months. But if we take a step back, we know it's an issue that's been around for decades and, of course, a very important issue for those of us who are focused on higher ed. Uh, you know, the the cost of college has increased significantly over the last 30 years. We know that. We know that the main grants that students receive from the federal government, the state government, the Pell Grant, the Cal Grant have not been able to keep pace with those costs. And on top of that, especially in California, we have a really high cost of living that keeps going up and that impacts, like you said, college affordability and even more. So more students have had to take more loans out to be able to afford college. And, uh, you know, to the tune of $1.6 trillion is a number that keeps getting thrown around, which to me is a number that's really, really hard to fathom. Um, but if you think about those dollars, what does that do to people's lives? It makes it harder to own a home, to build wealth. It impacts what jobs you can pursue, um, impacts your mental health. Uh, so many different aspects of life. And so put bluntly, long-term student debt can reduce and even in, at times cancel out the positive impacts of having a college degree. So that economic mobility and financial stability that we focus on at College Futures and so many of our partners focus on can be severely hampered when you have tens of thousands of dollars in loans to repay. Um, so right. It's an issue that we've been focusing on of late, and rightly so. So I think you you, you put it into a clear context. That, that's a lot of debt that being accumulated by students throughout the country, and we've heard a lot about that. Um, a lot of conversations about whose responsibility that is, how do we deal with it. But at the end of the day, this is affecting students both uh, you know throughout the country, not just here in California. Um, I think states like California, we've done a fairly good job of holding down the cost of education, but it's still getting out of control because the cost of education isn't just about tuition. It's about housing, which is crazy here in California. It's about transportation. It's about taking time off from work to attend school and, and the time it takes to get your degree. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, what, what some of the levers uh, that people are trying to to play with to deal with some of these issues. So at the federal level, we've heard a lot about what's going on in the Biden administration. We've heard about debt cancellation. Um, and we've also heard about the uh, public service loan forgiveness program. So let's let's start with what we call PSLF uh, or actually, actually PS. Uh, yes, PSLF. Sorry. Uh, public Student Loan Forgiveness. So many acronyms in higher ed, I lose track of them. So tell us about that program, Ria. Who does it affect? What's the timetable? And why should we care? 
Yes. Yeah, so PSLF, Public Service Loan Forgiveness, it's um, the acronyms can drive you crazy for sure. Um, this is a big deal. And we are actually in the last weeks of this big opportunity the federal government has been able to give around uh, this particular aspect of student debt. So through the end of this month, um, if you work um, at a public uh, employer or a nonprofit employer, there are opportunities to have federal student loans fully forgiven. Um, if you are a borrower who meets certain qualifications, like having, you know, paying down your loan for at least 10 years and a few more things. And that's a huge deal um, because this opportunity is time limited. It's really, at least for what we know right now, from last October through this October, so that opportunity closes um, on Halloween of this year. If you um, are working at a public college, if you're at a, you know, working at a school, a 501c3, a foundation like ours, there is an opportunity um, to have actually your full loan debt uh, forgiven, relieved. Um, so it's not capped and it's not capped at an income level as well. So um, it's a huge opportunity. We're really excited to be working with many of our um, amazing and hardworking grantee mm -hmm. partners who are working on this issue. Um, we uh, have a partnership with a next gen policy and they are partners at the Campaign for California Borrowers Rights to help as many Californians benefit from PSLF as possible. Um, and we were uh, actually one of their first partners as a philanthropic foundation to sign up for the employer challenge that they're leading to really encourage employers to educate their employees on, on how to be able to get their loans forgiven through this program and spreading the word to our peers as well. Uh, well that sounds like a remarkable opportunity, particularly for individuals who are working as teachers, who are working in, in public service, whatever that may be in um, uh, public colleges and universities. Um, so it, it affects all of them. And I think it's it's a great um, opportunity to pay back to those who serve us. Um, now, uh, public service loan forgiveness is not uh, a Biden administration idea. This has been around for a little while. So um, what are some of the components of public service loan forgiveness? um that our listeners need to be aware of so that um, they better understand uh, who qualifies for the program right so public service loan forgiveness like you said has been around for a while um, it has had its challenges uh, in terms of implementation and this temporary window that we're talking about kind of relieves and reduces many of the challenges that borrows have had to be able to take advantage of this opportunity. So some of the specifics around it is, like we said, um, you know, having worked um, at a public institution, a public agency, government, nonprofit, um, having been, you know, paying down your federal loans, this is specific to federal loans, for at least 10 years, um, and meeting a few other qualifications in terms of um, the type of loan that you have. Um, and then type of um, payment plan you have as well. So um, one of the other things we've been doing as a foundation is also uh, spreading the word about the recent um, uh, student debt cancellation that was announced by the Biden administration. And um, this certainly, depending on, on where you're at, um, uh, may be a good idea to you, a bad idea to you. But the good thing is that it's going to impact um, many hundreds of thousands of Californians who have student loan debt. Many of them may have never completed their um, credential or degree. Some of them may have been tied up in a, a for-profit situation, um, but it really um, impacts those students who took out um, uh, federal loans and may even have, take, have been supported by Pell. Uh, okay. So. Tell us a little bit about that push and why this is important to Californians. Right. Uh, so this is hugely important to Californians, particularly during the pandemic. So many students, former students, borrowers have um, 
you know, been able to benefit from a pause in payments on their loans. And this is an opportunity to have a portion of those loans forgiven. Um, and, and this piece of the, the Biden-Harris Student Debt Relief Plan is for individuals who make um, up, you know, under 125,000 a year. Um, and they could be able to receive up to $20,000 in debt cancellation um, and $10,000 if um, you were not a Pell Grant recipient. So there are multiple options here that are open. Um, you know, qualifications can change um, depending on the program. Um, but the bottom line is that, you know, it's an opportunity to be able to um, have some of these loans forgiven and be able to, you know, apply that, uh, uh, the dollars that you would have been putting to um, towards paying down your loan debt to something else, um, whether that is um, going back to school, whether it's, you know, towards a home or your general cost of living, that's the opportunity there. And I'll add that as we record this, we know that legal challenges brought on by a handful of states have led to a temporary pause in the administration of federal student debt relief. Um, but this is a quickly evolving situation. So by the time our viewers see this video, things may have started up again. Not sure, but what we do know is that the federal government is still accepting applications and still reviewing them. So borrowers are still very much encouraged to apply during this temporary period. And, um, you know, we were just talking about PSLF and you know, there are other opportunities um, to make these uh, program structured to be able to support borrowers. Um, and it remains to be seen which some which of those end up happening. Um, but there's a lot of opportunity that we should be paying attention to in the next few months and year. Well, that's good news for borrowers and particularly given um, the rise in inflation, the cost of living here in California. Um, this is a great opportunity for borrowers in California who qualify to be able to put more money toward just paying their bills rather than uh, paying back some of the student loans that they have. So um, now you're leading uh, our policy initiatives at the foundation. Uh, our foundation works and supports many grantees, uh, institutions, organizations that help spread the word about college affordability and about these issues surrounding uh, uh, student loan debt and debt relief. So. Tell us a little bit about uh, the efforts that you're engaged in with um, your grantees, the, the research that you're seeing, and some of the efforts that we're funding as a foundation uh, to shine a light on this issue of affordability. Absolutely. So our, our strategy at College Futures is, um, you know, around the broader issue of how college is financed. And that's more than just one single issue, one single challenge. Um, you know, we think about how higher ed institutions are financed. We think about tuition policies and how that impacts students and potential students. And then we also think a lot about the financial supports that students receive to pay for college. That's, you know, the grants that you don't need to pay back as well as the loans, which is how we started this conversation, which often you do. Um, so we are so um, privileged to really be able to work with some grantees, partners that are really changing the game on not just student debt, but also college affordability more broadly. Um, you know, we're lucky to be longtime partners with several partners who are focused on advocacy and data to be able to lift up what broader college affordability reform looks like. Um, you know, partners like TICUS, the Institute for College Access and Success that has been working on this issue for many years. Um, you know, we, we are, have the opportunity to work with organizations like RISE and Young Invincibles who are doing the important work of mobilizing young people on the ground to make sure they're aware of and can benefit from loan relief. We um, have the opportunity to work with researchers who are really looking into the data around not what exists only around policy inter interventions, but also around um, how higher ed can be better financed to avoid these problems for the future. So partners like the Public Policy Institute of California, the UC Merced, Here Lab, and it really takes a village to make a dent um, on these entrenched 
systemic issues. Um, so it's it's uh, an amazing opportunity to be able to work with such a great group of partners. That is um, an amazing group of partners, and we are very appreciative to the work that they do out in the field uh, and throughout the country. Um, and by the way, I'm just incredibly impressed um, and in awe of young people today. The student organizations, you mentioned some of them. I mean, a lot of the change that we're seeing today, particularly in higher education, is because of the student voice. Um, so um, I'm just so proud that we're able to support organizations like that because that is truly who is going to change the face of higher education. Um, us old people, um, you know, have had our day, but it's these young people, the students, who are finally organizing, and um, I'm just so proud of them. So, right. Well, you know, as a funder, you know, something that we always try to keep top of mind is it's not just the availability of a program mm -hmm. or a policy that makes a difference for students. It is, you know, how is it implemented? How is it messaged? What does the outreach look like? Um, you know, what is the follow through? And then how is that getting translated back up into, uh, you know, policy change again. And so it's this entire cycle. So when I talk about the village, it's really true. We need student leadership, mm -hmm. we need advocacy partners, we need research partners. Um, you know, we need those at state agencies and institutions um, to be all on the same page and working towards the same goal. That's right. And, and I have to make one quick correction. When I referred to us old people, I was referring to myself. You're still younger. <laughs> Thank you. I, I appreciate the clarification. <laughs> so let's let's um, let's talk about um, you know what this movement look like looks like going forward. And mm -hmm. certainly from my point of view, um, there's one piece of this puzzle that we haven't talked a lot about that um, we're only just beginning to talk about at the federal level and to some extent at the state level, and that is the institutions themselves, colleges, universities who um, are a part of this challenge, and in some cases the problem, because of the cost of education. And I believe, and I know that there's a, a growing number of people across the country who also believe that institutions have to step up and have more accountability over student debt accumulation. I mean, we see this happening in the news, we see programs, um, college uh, experiences, you know, surpassing fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year, and that's a lot of expense. And for some of our lowest income students, that is a lot of debt. So um, we're calling on institutions in California and throughout the country to step up and asking policymakers in California and at the federal level to think about how we create an accountability framework to make sure that institutions are part of the solution as well. So we have. Uh, as we begin to wrap up, tell us what's what's on the horizon. What's what's um, uh, what's next in this movement? What are some of the um, ideas that we're uh, seeding? Um, what are some of the more proactive approaches to uh, a college affordability system? Absolutely. You know, debt relief is really important, but it's not everything. And um, moving forward, what we need is a college affordability system that doesn't recreate these huge debt challenges for the next cohort of students. So, you know, in my opinion, and what we're working on here at the foundation is working towards a system of supports for students that's robust, that's integrated, that's proactive, like you said, and, and that's streamlined. And so how can uh, the higher ed system, our state, you know, be able to move away from more piecemeal efforts to something that is more comprehensive, that pushes administrative burdens away from students to figure out, you know, what do I qualify for? How do I apply here? What does happen here? Is this something real? Is this something um, that does or doesn't exist? How do we make a system that's better connected and more transparent? Um, and, you know, we can always no matter how many dollars you put into a system, if the money and the support and the challenges aren't meeting the needs um, of the current you know, crop of students, we're not gonna be able to make a dent. Um, so 
you know, better integrating, for example, college financial aid and, and social safety net programs. There's some movement towards that. Um, you know, there's movement towards simplifying the application processes. Um, I don't think that there's really one magic bullet. It's going to mm -hmm. be really a combination of all of those things. In addition to what you said about institutional responsibility and institutional finance, um, but really also thinking about the processes that students have to go through to be able to get the resources that are available to them is something that we're focusing on a lot. Um, the last In the last year, I think, the state legislature estimated that there's about $500 million in federal and state aid that's left on the table each year by California Ouch. students who would be eligible. It does, it hurts. It hurts to hear that number, but have not been able to complete the processes to be able to receive those resources. So those are things that, you know, we just talked about implementation. Um, they don't always get the headline, um, but are critically important if we're actually trying to solve these issues once and for all. Great. Well, sounds like you have a lot of work to do, Ria. Yep. And and you too as well. Together, we'll, we'll get it done. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate you taking some time, Ria, today to talk about this issue. It's, it's top of mind for a lot of people. Um, and hopefully it remains top of mind well after, um, you know, public service loan forgiveness, well after the current round of debt cancellation. This is an issue that we really need to solve for our state, the state of California, to continue to be successful for all its residents and for the country to be successful. So again, thanks for the work that you're doing, um, for the support that you're giving our grantees and for continuing to bring this issue to the forefront, Rita. Thank you. And let's continue the conversation and continue working with our partners to do so.